Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. So this is the video you've probably all been waiting for. I previously made a video called Gravity Might Not Exist, where I explain how the Higgs particle gives us mass. If you haven't seen that already, please make sure you check it out up here. Well, one thing I kind of skimmed over was the possibility that we could be edging on the cliff of a Higgs doomsday scenario that would essentially wipe out the universe as we know it. Have I got your attention yet? Well, let's dive into it. To start, I'm going to introduce you to a phenomenon known as quantum tunneling. In classical physics, let's imagine that you have a particle, and this particle, it has energy, and in particular, potential energy. If we visualize this particle on a graph of potential energy versus position, it would look something like this, where particle A, which sits higher up on the graph, will have more potential energy than particle B, which sits lower. Now, in this space, there exist barriers. These are regions where the potential energy is higher than the energy of a particle. The barrier can be created by any kind of force field, such as an electric force field, a magnetic force field, or even a gravitational force field. When a particle encounters a potential barrier, it cannot pass through this barrier if its energy is less than the potential energy of the barrier. You can imagine the barrier as like a hill. If the particle has enough energy, it could travel over the hill. But if it doesn't, then it would just bounce off it. However, in quantum mechanics, a particle can actually tunnel through this barrier, even if it has less energy due to its wave-like nature. This is known as quantum tunneling. The probability of the particle reflecting off the barrier, quantum tunneling through it, or being absorbed by the barrier is dependent on the energy of the particle and the height and width of the barrier. The higher a barrier is and the wider it is, the lower the probability of a particle being able to pass through it via tunneling. You may be thinking that this is all a bit abstract, but quantum tunneling is a real thing and it's been observed. It's actively being used all the time. The most common case is in scanning tunneling microscopes used to image surfaces of materials at the atomic scale. Here, a voltage is applied across a solid crystal that you want to scan and a sharp tip. Electrons can then tunnel through the thin barrier between the tip and the surface of the crystal, and the resulting current can be used to create an image of the surface. In astronomy, quantum tunneling happens in the process of nuclear fusion in stars. In the core of a star, hydrogen atoms collide with each other, and due to the high temperature and pressure, they can overcome the Coulomb repulsion between them and then fuse into helium. However, the energy required to overcome the Coulomb barrier is higher than the thermal energy available. But due to the phenomenon of quantum tunneling, some of the hydrogen atoms can actually tunnel through the barrier and undergo fusion, leading to the release of huge amounts of energy. Now, moving on to the interesting part. You and everything around you is made of particles. But when the universe began, no particles had any mass. They all sped around at the speed of light. Stars, planets, and life would only emerge because particles gained their mass from a quantum field known as the Higgs field, and it permeates all of space. And it does so when they interact with the field and the associated particle, the Higgs boson. We spoke about this in my previous video where I said massless particles like photons and gluons don't interact with the Higgs field. But why is this so? Why, if everything in the universe started off as massless, did some things end up with mass and others didn't? To explain this, scientists took a look at the Higgs potential, which describes the behavior of the Higgs field. The shape of the Higgs potential is often described as a Mexican hat because it resembles a sombrero with a circular brim and a peak at its center. The z-axis here is the potential energy, and the xy-axis are the Higgs vacuum expectation value, or essentially the average value of the field. And because it can be any number, any even complex number, 
i.e. it can have a real and imaginary components, it can often be depicted in 3D. In the very early universe, the very high temperatures meant that the average value of the Higgs field was zero, and this corresponds to the top of the Mexican hat, or a state known as the symmetric phase. At this phase, the Higgs potential had a perfectly symmetric shape. So here, the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force were unified into a single electroweak force, and all particles were massless, despite having loads of energy. Now this spot is unstable, just like a ball lying on a hill, just a small gust of wind and it will roll down. It takes a lot of potential energy for the Higgs to remain at zero. It wants to minimize the potential energy. So just picoseconds after the Big Bang, it rolls down the side of the hat. And this is known as the electroweak phase transition, in which the electroweak force separates into the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, which we're more familiar with today. In this broken phase, we no longer have symmetry. The W and Z bosons were able to acquire mass, whilst the photon and gluons remained massless. Now, to make things a bit easier, I'm going to plot the Higgs potential in 2D, where the y-axis is now the Higgs potential, and the x-axis is the Higgs expectation value. Here, at the rim of the Mexican hat, the expectation value of the Higgs vacuum corresponds to about 246 giga electron volts. And that corresponds to a Higgs boson mass of 125 giga electron volts. This has been measured to extreme precision at the particle accelerator CERN. Now, the question is, given that we're sitting at the dip of the Mexican hat, the lowest point, is this state stable or not? Or put it another way, is this the lowest potential energy of the system and a true minimum, or can we go even lower? If the system is stable, then we can expect the edge of the Mexican hat to keep extending upwards infinitely. But if it's unstable, then at some point you'd expect the hat to start to turn down again. And it turns out that the value of the Higgs boson mass of about 125 giga electron volts suggests that the vacuum state of the universe is located near the boundary between being stable and being metastable. In other words, there could potentially be an even lower energy state. The latest calculations suggest that the potential turns over at about a vacuum expectation value of 10 to the 12 giga electron volts, and then it will turn negative. So that's good, right? A lot of energy would be required for the Higgs to climb over essentially this huge cliff to get down to this lower energy state. Well, wrong. With quantum tunneling, we know it's possible for the Higgs to tunnel through this potential barrier. If the Higgs field were to happen, it could have profound consequences for the universe. In the Higgs doomsday scenario, if the Higgs field were to decay to a lower energy state, for example due to some quantum fluctuation, it would release a huge amount of energy that would create a bubble of what we call a true vacuum. And this would expand at the speed of light, destroying everything in its path. It would be catastrophic. It would destroy the universe as we know it. However, it is important to note that this scenario is highly speculative. And whilst the Higgs field is indeed in a metastable state, the probability of it decaying through and quantum tunneling in the foreseeable future is extremely low. The estimated time for such an event to occur is on the order of 10 to the 100 years, which is many much times longer than the current age of the universe. Furthermore, even if such an event were to occur, it's clear that it wouldn't necessarily lead to the destruction of the universe, because some other theories suggest that a vacuum decay event could instead lead to the formation of new structures and potentially even new universes, rather than the complete destruction of our universe and everything in it. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.